This is module 13, lesson four. What we're gonna look at now is some properties of solutions. So first of all, you need to know these three things that affect the rate of dissolving. Some of these you know from everyday life. For example, if you're putting sugar in some tea, you mostly understand that if you stir it, the sugar will dissolve faster. And most people make tea with hot water because it helps dissolve the sugar faster too. So basically you have three things that can make dissolving happen faster or more slowly if desired. Stirring, temperature increase, and smaller particle size. So if we're looking at making dissolving happen faster, then you need to increase the temperature and actually decrease the particle size. So all three of these work through the exact same reasoning. If you stir, you're increasing the contact of how often the solute comes into contact with the solvent. If you increase temperature, remember that an increase in temperature means that your particles are moving more quickly, then that increases the contact between solute and solvent. And if you decrease the particle size, this sounds kind of counterintuitive, but the smaller that you make a particle, the more surface area that you're gonna have overall. So for example, if you take a block of sugar versus the little granules or little bitty pieces of powdered sugar, as the pieces get smaller and smaller, the surface area is actually going up if you added the area of all of them together. So by the same token, Decreased particle size means increased contact between solute and solvent. They all three work by the exact same methods. So memorize three different ways to affect the rate, but one reason why they work. Okay, the next thing is solubility. Uh, mostly what you have here is vocabulary words, which means that you need to make sure that you have the definitions of solubility, unsaturated, saturated, supersaturated, and repeating them and finally spelling them correctly, we have miscible and immiscible. So take a moment to make sure that you have all of these things committed to paper so that you can study them later, and then we'll talk about a couple of things about them. So first of all, we're going to look at solubility in greater depth as we go on here. Uh, to discuss solubility is to describe how much of something will dissolve in a given amount of solvent. Now for us, we're usually going to express it as 100 grams of solvent. So why do we have to give a certain amount? Because it stands to reason that if I have a small container of water versus you know, a super large container of water, this large container would be able to dissolve more of whatever we put in there, whether it's sugar, salt, or anything, because well, there's more water inside of here, there's more solvent. So the only fair way to compare one substance to another is to compare it gram for gram. And most commonly it's given as 100 grams of solvent. Now, talk about these three for just a minute. If something is unsaturated, technically what that means is that it can still dissolve more. It has not dissolved all of the solute, I'm oh, sorry, about said solvent. It hasn't dissolved all of the solute that it can at that point. Saturated means it has dissolved everything that it is supposed to be able to dissolve. And super saturated means it's actually dissolved more than it should be able to. We've already discussed miscible and immiscible before. So remember that miscible means uh, soluble and immiscible means insoluble. Now let's look at these particular terms right here on a graph. It's very common for us to have graphs like this on the final exam. So this particular one is color coded and you know that makes it somewhat easier to read. I can refer to it by the colors up here. The one that you'll get on the NCFE will be black and white and may or may not have this many things on it. It could actually have more or it could have less. So this is a solubility curve is what it's called. And it's for grams of salts. These are all salts in 100 grams of water. This is the part where we just said usually you're given a reference amount of solvent uh, to talk about. So for 100 grams of water, 
this is how much of each substance will dissolve. And as you can tell, they're different. So first of all, let's talk about saturation. If you were talking about the terms we did before about unsaturated, then we had saturated, and we had supersaturated. So in terms of these words, if you were going to do this, you would need to plot your points. So if I told you, for example, looking at this brown curve right here, the KClO3, looking at this substance, if we have this much, if we had 30 grams of KClO3 in 80 degree water, 100 grams of 80 degree water, that's what we have. If we have this much of KClO3 dissolved in 100 grams of water at 80 degrees Celsius, this is unsaturated. How do I know? Because the dot that I made on the graph is under the line. If it was saturated, the dot would sit on the line. That's how I think about it, is the dot sat on the line. Sat is saturated. Un is under. So how much will dissolve in 80 degrees Celsius water? Well, we plot our points, and we go over here and look. So, I mean, it ends up somewhere about here. Apparently, I'm going to make a bunch of boxes pop up. Well, to be fair, it's more than 30. It's less than 40. I think a fair answer would be somewhere around like 37, 38, 39. There's some ambiguity there, so you would need to guess more than 35, but less than 40. So about 37 grams of KClO3 would dissolve in 80 degrees Celsius water, 100 grams of it. All right, so how do you get super saturated? Well, then it would be, think about super, like super script. It has to be above it. So if you plotted a point that was here, let's say we had 50 grams of KClO3 in 80 degrees Celsius water, 100 grams of water. Now that would be super saturated because it's only supposed to dissolve 37. And if it's dissolved 50, well then that's more than what we should be able to dissolve. So how do you get it to be that way? Well, what you would have to do is you would have to heat the water up to about here. This is where 50 grams would dissolve, so that's about what? Maybe 93, 94, I can't draw a straight line for anything. Maybe 94 degrees. You could heat it up higher than that. So you would heat it up, have it dissolve that much, and then you would slowly cool the water back down. And as you cool the water down, you would end up with it being a super saturated solution. So one of the things that you need to be able to do is plot your points and know how to reference that with unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated. I have some practice problems for you to try to identify if a solution is unsaturated, saturated, or supersaturated. So just simply remember, unsaturated, it's under the line, saturated, it's sat on the line, and supersaturated, it's above the line. Another thing that you could do with graphs like this is identify things that are like least soluble or most soluble. So for example, if I clean this off of all of our ink and we just look at the graph, the substance on here that is the least soluble or the least affected, let's do least affected by temperature change. The one that's least affected by temperature change is NaCl because it keeps the flattest line as the temperature goes up. Now which one is most affected by temperature change? Well, then we need a steeper slope. So the steepest slope that I could find might be KNO3 or CaCl2. Now the difference between these two, CaCl2 looks steepest right in here. However, KNO3 makes the biggest change. It goes from about 12 or 13 all the way up to 100 grams, whereas this one only goes from maybe upper 50s to 100. So if I had to choose, I would pick KNO3 as the one that is affected the most by increase in temperature. Okay, now which one of these actually becomes less soluble as temperature goes up? Well, that would be this one, the CE2SO43, because look what happens to it. The graph actually goes down. It actually becomes less soluble as temperature goes up. What that means is that this is likely a gas. Gases become less soluble with increases in temperature. So if you had to guess, if something decreases with temperature increase, 
guess that is a guess. The last thing that you're going to have to do, we've kind of already done, as I was explaining, saturated, unsaturated, and supersaturated, is simply to predict amounts. So if I gave you a question and I said, tell me how many grams of KCl could dissolve in 100 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius, what you would do is you would plot your points and you would read the graph. And you would say, well, about 39 grams of KCl would dissolve in 100 grams of water at 40 degrees Celsius because you just simply plot your points. Now, what you need to do is maybe listen to this again. You have some practice problems to try where you're being asked to answer these same types of questions. Something else to consider as you do this is that part of this is just simple graph reading. So the one that I just asked you about KCL, if I told you that you had 30 grams dissolved in 40 degrees Celsius water, how much more could you add to make it saturated? You would just simply find the difference. If you told me that it would take 39, but you're at 30, well, then that's the difference of 9. You would need to add 9 more grams to get it to go from there to there. So, same scenario. What if I told you that instead of adding 9 more grams, I actually added, like, 15? Well, then 9 would dissolve right here. What about the other 6? Because there's 6 more grams. Then what it should do is just float to the bottom of the container and sit there. The only way that you're going to get 15 more grams to dissolve would be if you up the temperature to wherever the 15, like the 6 extra, put it right up here. So the only way to get 6 extra to dissolve is to up the temperature to about here, wherever this is, so down to approximately 70 degrees Celsius, so that you could get it to dissolve. So keep in mind that part of this is just simple graph reading. If you decide that you need my help with it, you know that I'm available during office hours. Now, you know, since we've looked at this, a couple of things that obviously affect solubility. Temperature, you can very clearly see by the graph that temperature affects solubility. Most of the time, temperature increases solubility. The only time that it usually does not is if it's gases. Okay, pressure also has an effect. Now, it's not represented on the previous graph, but gases are most affected by pressure. Think about sodas. Usually, in order to get a gas to dissolve in a liquid, you need to increase the pressure. So that's why keeping a lid on your soda keeps the gas bubbles inside of it is because it keeps them soluble. Okay, so after this, it's time for you to do your practice. If you need help from me to read the graph, then let me know during office hours and I'll be delighted to help.